Hey everybody, Thomas Joseph here with another kitchen conundrum for you. Now cheesecakes, they're notorious for those unsightly cracks on top of them, but I'm gonna show you the trick today in making sure that you will get a cheesecake without a cracked top. Now there are two main reasons why cheesecakes create that crack on top, and one is overbeating your mixture, and the other is extreme temperature differentials. I'm gonna start off with just the cheesecake batter itself so that you know this really great recipe. In the bowl of a standing mixer here, I have seven eight ounce blocks of cream cheese, and that's three and a half pounds of cream cheese total. So that's a lot, but this creates a 10 inch cheesecake. So you're gonna have to invite all of your friends over to share this. So low speed here. And it's very important when you are making a cheesecake or any cake in general, that your ingredients are at room temperature. So my cream cheese has been sitting out for quite some time, so it's nice and soft. My eggs are at room temperature. My sour cream is at room temperature. So cream your cream cheese until it's light and fluffy, about two to three minutes. So while this is creaming, I'm going to sift together my flour and sugar. Now flour is important in the cheesecake batter because it really helps to create that structure or to maintain the structure of the cheesecake. So I have two and a quarter cups of granulated sugar here. I have a half a cup of all purpose flour, sifting the ingredients together. It's very important. The sugar, what it does is it helps to break up the flour so you don't get any clumps. I'm going to give the cream cheese a little scrape here. You can see that it's nice and light. And I'm gonna gradually add my flour and sugar mixture. Now you wanna be careful, like I had said, overbeating is one of the main reasons why a cheesecake will crack. So you have to be sure that you're not incorporating too much air because too much air creates too much volume. And in the end, when you're baking it, it will end up collapsing. I'm gonna add in the sour cream. So it's one cup of sour cream. Again, this is at room temperature. And for flavoring, one and a half teaspoons of the best quality vanilla extract you can find. Mix this together, and I'm gonna add five eggs here. Make sure you do it one at a time, incorporating each egg before adding another, just like you would with any other cake. And the last egg here. So this looks great. The batter is nice and silky. It's not grainy at all because everything has been evenly incorporated. And that's because the ingredients were at room temperature and we added them gradually. At this stage, while I have the batter in the bowl, is if you give this a slight tap, what it does is any air bubbles that are inside your batter, it'll release them up to the top. So you can see the air bubbles are starting to kind of float up to the top and that's what you want them to do. Now for the crust in the pan. Now I said I was using a 10 inch spring form pan. In this I have a pre-baked graham cracker crust. Now you can use whatever crust you'd like. Sometimes chocolate cookie crusts are really great with a cheesecake. And take that batter, which it seems like a lot, but this will all fit into the pan here. Pour it in. So you can see here I have my spring form pan in a deep roasting pan, and that's because I'm going to bake my cheesecake in a water bath. And a water bath is really great because it helps to bake the cheesecake at a low, even temperature. I've wrapped my pan in a double layer of tin foil, and that's to help to create a barrier between the cheesecake and the water, just so that there's no leakage there. And I'm gonna come up about halfway up the spring form pan with some hot water. So now for baking. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees with the rack situated in the middle of the oven. The cheesecake is gonna bake for about 45 minutes and then reduce the temperature down to 325 degrees. So it's a low, slow cooking process. Once the cheesecake has finished baking, turn off the oven and leave the door ajar slightly for about an hour. Once that's done, remove it to the counter on a wire rack to cool completely before chilling in the refrigerator. The cheesecake has been refrigerated overnight. Make sure that you refrigerate it uncovered because any extra warmth within the cheesecake, if it is covered, will create condensation and it will drip onto the top of your cheesecake. So this is nice and cold. Remove the foil. Now, if you have one of these, maybe you don't, maybe you have one in the garage, use it. If not, a hairdryer will work or some warm towels. Gently go around the perimeter of this collar here, just warming the sides up ever so slightly. And then you should be able to release the cheesecake easily and it should pull right away from the collar. I like to bring the cheesecake off the counter onto my hand, push the cake up, 
and let the collar sit on your wrist so that it doesn't mark up the edge of your cheesecake. And doesn't that look beautiful? You can see the top of the cheesecake is nice and lovely. There's no crack down the center, and that's because we didn't overmix the batter and the temperature extremes weren't too severe. So it was a nice constant low temperature. Now I'm dipping my knife into some warm water here to slice the cheesecake and make sure you wipe it clean. No extra, extra water on the blade. Cutting two slices here helps to ease out the first slice. Gently wedge your pie server underneath. Make sure you get all of that wonderful crust and that you go to the center of the cake. Should have a perfect slice here. So there you go, two tricks for a crack-free cheesecake. Now, if you have any kitchen conundrums that you need solved, write in the comment section below or reach out to me using the hashtag kitchen conundrums and I will solve whatever kitchen problems you may have. Enjoy.